Hello, 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 and welcome to yet another episode of the Conversation Capital. As always, the voice of reason, Obonga Bwata. Hey, girl. How are hey, you? Hey, I'm good. Well, you know, today this question has been making me introspect. You know how we say, are you telling me your true feelings? Uh-huh. We're like, I'm good. Then we move yes, on. Yes, yes, absolutely. I'm like, I'm tired, actually. I'm uh, exhausted. I've been complaining about being tired. Yes, why are you tired? Is it the heat or are you just generally tired? I think I'm just tired. I don't know. And then now I'm trying to interrogate. That's why with two earlier two years, like, mm, I need to reevaluate my, oh, yes. my lifestyle. Yes, yes, yes. Because yes. I'm always tired. Oh, yes. Anyway, I'm tired, but I'm good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also good. My name is Ursula Mariani, and today's episode of The Conversation Capital, we want to talk all things to do with child abuse. Uh, I think we've we've highlighted on so many things like kids getting pregnant young, and we want to just look at the things that build around that. We've spoken about you know child uh, or children's depression. What how do you say that? Yes, child depression. Um, depression in, chi- in yeah, yes, like depression <laughs> in children maybe. And so we've brought in somebody from the National Center for Child Protection. And it's Dana Rowland, who is a counselor there. Could mm. you please specify? I know the specific details of the type of counselor you are. You're a specialized child. Yes. Yes. So I'm a specialist wellness counselor. Yes. And um, yes, I basically work for the National Center for Child Protection. Um, you can basically say I'm a chameleon. I wear mm. many different hats. Oh. So one day I would be counseling the kids. Another day I'll be training teachers at schools mm. and equipping them with the necessary skills that they need or tools to handle everything that is going on with our youth nowadays. Mm. And another day we are sitting in meetings or hosting golf days to try and raise funds. Mm. So at the National Center for Child Protection, we're not government funded. So we have to think of out, outside the box, crazy ideas to try and pull those funds in. Mm. The, the child abuse hotline, is that, is that your initiative? So we've got six, sorry, 600, 262 child protection hotlines yes. across sure. the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, currently, as we speak, our CEO is in Mauritius launching our first international hotline. Oh, mm. So as of amazing. tomorrow, uh, which would be the month of October, yes. Mental Health Awareness Month, yes. we are launching a new child protection hotline and taking our initiative international. Hmm. Sure. I, I'm so curious, and, and oh, this definitely wasn't the first question. Okay, actually, let me... No, speak. <laughs> when somebody calls the Child Protection Hotline, what happens? Okay, so our Child Protection Hotlines are accessible on SMS, WhatsApp, and phone calls. Mm-hmm. So normally a child doesn't pick up the phone and phone in. They prefer to hide behind a screen. So they'll pick up their phone, they'll send a WhatsApp, or they'll send an SMS, that's just the way that the the whole world has kind of moved in. That's the direction we've all gone to. You know, we no longer have to face our demons head on. We can now hide behind a screen. Mm. And that's the way we do things. And that also makes other problems, you know, a little bit more intense, such as cyberbullying. Mm. But I'm sure we'll have that conversation. Yes. But basically, the, the process, what happens is we receive an, a WhatsApp or an SMS or a phone call. And then we've got a set amount of questions that we need to ask that individual. So if it's the child themselves, we ask if mom and dad are aware of what's going on going on if mom and dad are abusing the kids um, in that case we'll handle it a bit differently yes but we need those questions the most important question how old is the child are there any siblings that are also being neglected or abused and where does the child reside hmm. so if a child for instance is sitting in Glen Vista mm-hmm. Joburg South yes. uh, but they go to school in Santon if the child goes to their teacher in Santon and says I'm being abused at home they cannot get the police station in Santon to assist. Mm. They have to go to the police station nearest to where the child resides mm. um, in order for them to assist because they have jurisdiction over that area. Mm. So we just really assist that child or a neighbor or a parent in order to guide them through the process of getting that child help or assistance. Mm. And we have to have that important information sent through to us, like where the child lives. Yes, and then what happens? Does it become? Does it ever become physical? Where you guys have to physically go to the location? No. So okay. we we do not get involved in the physical side of things. Mm. Um, unfortunately, we're not allowed to with mm. the uh, laws in place. We don't go and kick down doors and mm. beat our parents and yes. snatch the child and <laughs> run away, mm. yet, as it's painted out in the movies. Mm-hmm. So the procedure that follows from that is they fill in a form. We then contact the nearest police station, whether it be the sergeants or the captain at the police station. We ask them to really get involved 
you know, if the home visit needs to take place, they get a social worker involved mm. and they go through to investigate what's going on. Mm. Unfortunately, it is quite a lengthy process. Yes. It doesn't happen overnight yes. or within a week. So we do have a lot of individuals that get a bit, you know, impatient, I'd mm. say. And it is a, a case of urgency. We mm. need to get that child help mm. as quick as possible. But it also is on someone else's time and schedule and mm. their availability mm. to help. Mm. And then the social worker, the police officer basically take it from there. Hmm. Sure. Okay. Okay. Now to move into. No, our... before we move on <laughs> to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, as we're talking about the fact that you have to work with um, so many agencies, I can't help but wonder what are, what are some of the challenges you face in trying to get children assistance? Very good question. Yes. Um, and I'm going to be brutally honest. Please. We as an organization tend to not hide the truth. Mm. So we're, we're liked for that and not liked as well. Mm. So a, a big challenge that we face is getting people to do their jobs. Mm. Uh, and what we mean by that is we work quite closely with social workers. There's a great need for social workers, mm. especially in assisting us with you know, protecting children. Mm. But to try and get a social worker, not all of them, but mm. most of them, will not answer phone calls and messages or take on cases on a Friday, Saturday or Sunday. So for instance, we've had a case previously where a child was being, um, it was actually two children, mom was threatening suicide, she wanted to kill herself and then kill the kids as well. Neighbors were aware of the mother being a little bit mentally unstable mm. and uh, she was threatening, threatening, threatening. We needed to urgently have those children removed and mm. placed in a place of safety. Fortunately, in that case, there were grandparents willing to take those kids in mm. temporarily. And the sergeant phoned us and said, I'm outside the house that you sent the address of. Now what do I do? And we said, well, where's your social worker? Your mm. social worker needed to go with you. Mm. And he said, well, the social worker doesn't work on weekends. Mm. So our, one of our biggest challenges is to get the social worker to follow through. Mm. They have got so many cases, you know, they, mm. they plates are really, really full as well. And there's not enough of them. Mm. We need more social workers that are assigned jurisdiction over a specific area. So they can also assist in those cases and home visits and, mm. you know, parenting plans and all the rest. Um, you know, I, I asked you this specific question because on um, a Facebook group um, in my area, um, uh, someone put out a, an alert to say there's a child that you need to get out of a particular situation. And the exact issue was that there was no social work available over the weekend. Yes. They'd have to wait for Monday. Mm -hmm. And I like that in as much as you're keeping social workers accountable, you're also saying they, are, yeah, they don't okay. have the right re yes. resources to help mm -hmm. them. Yes. Um, and I remember I, I, I did social work in the night. I left it I dropped out I think it was in my third year of doing social work and I just remember the amount of work the social workers even during our practicals they'd, they'd have to give us some of the cases that um, they couldn't that they knew we shouldn't be really handling because mm -hmm. we are just shadowing mm -hmm. but because they had so much on their plate sure. with very little resources mm -hmm. yes. um, and it's so unfortunate that it's it's usually the NGOs that go out of their way but they don't have the right funding I also didn't want to go down this rabbit hole. Like, as she was answering the first question, I was also like, how much assistance do you really get yeah. from these organizations yeah. that you say you call on? But it becomes, you know, it's a tricky place. You don't want to be in this place where you're constantly speaking bad to the system. Of course, when the system as well, you know, it's overloaded. They're trying. Everyone is trying. Mm. But, you know, but I remember, you know, just to bring it back to like a personal story, I remember I was, um, oh, yeah, I, I was robbed. And then I went to go get a, a case number at the uh, police station. Mm. And so this child walks in and he explains how he's been walking some distance. And he was a bit far off. I mean, he was at least 20 kilometers, uh, maybe 20, 15 kilometers from uh, where that police station was. And he explains that he's been walking, you know, for some time to get there. He's barefoot. You can tell that he's been roughed up a little bit. And he's maybe about 9, 10. And he explains that, no, I'm being abused and my dad comes home drunk and so the police said, explain, when did you start living with your dad? So he says, my mom died two years ago. We were sent to my gran. My father fetched me at the beginning of the year. And it was like February. I remember it was right at the beginning when they saw my laptop. Mm. My dad, and you know how it's quite an uncomfortable story to be sharing in front of so many people. They, he wasn't given any privacy or any kind of, <laughs> the ladies really interrogate, not even like with softness, mm -hmm. receiving this child, mm. you know, and really a child. And she's, you know, really like, interrogating him and then what happened and then why why did he fetch you what were you doing to the sure. granny 
How he's like, I don't know why I was fetched from my grand, but I know that he said that he wanted to have his child and he fetched me. But ever since he's fine when he's sober, but when he's drunk, this is him saying, mm-hmm. he comes home and he beats me. And it was this lady's response, and she said, What do you know about a drunk adult? It's things like that that get you beaten. She said that in front of everyone. I kid you not, this is something I was, and I'm like, What? You know, and at this point, you're just like, it's such a difficult place to be. That's why as soon as you started, I was just like, and you're like, you call the police. I'm like, which one is <laughs> Saps? <laughs> is that the police? <laughs> you yeah. Know? It's such a difficult, you know, place to be. And like I said, you don't want to be this person that's constantly speaking bad to the system. But sometimes mm. it's so exhausting when you hear these stories and you see them firsthand. And you're like, you know, what is one, you know, how do, how does, how does it end? How does the story end? You know, how many lives could be saved if there were more efficient systems in place? Yes. Anyway. How many more lives saved in time? Yes. 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 Tell yes. us about your average day at the office. My average day in the office. So, as I said, we have to think outside the box to raise funds. Yes. So, it would really depend on what's happening in that period of time. So, because we work so quite closely with schools... Uh, most of the time we'll be going to a school, speaking to the learners, educating them on substance abuse, bullying, you know, self-harm and all of the rest. There's lots of topics that we speak on. So we'll go mm-hmm. to a school, we'll address the learners, and then a lot of the times the learners stay behind after. Mm-hmm. So I think what fascinates me at, on, about the average day at the office is that it takes us 40 minutes to gain the trust of a child. Wow. For them to reach a point where something is going on behind the scenes, whether it be they are being bullied at school, whether they've got an eating disorder, they've mm. tried to commit suicide a week before, mm. or mom and dad are abusing them and they're not mm. getting the necessary support that they need. That child gains that trust in those 40 minutes mm. and they stay behind after that talk to speak to a counselor. Mm. So we have a lot of student counselors placed at our organization and they often attend those school talks with us. And then we stay behind to assist those learners. Mm. I mean, they stay for a couple of minutes or sometimes a couple of minutes turns into a 30 to an hour long session Mm. but it really depends on what the child needs Mm. so if we're not going to a school to counsel children and to educate children then a normal day in the office would be sitting with my laptop in front of me they like to tease me quite often (laughs) i'm a workaholic and i'm in that laptop given has seen me before where we've been at a school talk and i've got my laptop in my lap and i'm just going at it Mm. we have so many things to attend to as an organization Mm. and there's just not enough time in a day so that would be a normal really yeah i really respect the work that you guys do and Mm. i know because you're in the industry you know looking at the numbers practically tell us what what is it that teenagers are actually struggling with because as you mentioned bullying eating disorders i was like oh yeah yeah i was thinking of an abusive dad but actually this could be actually more prevalent issues and because you're in the industry you know these things What are teenagers struggling with today? So our teenagers, and not only our teenagers, the sad reality that we're sitting with now is that we're not only dealing with an identity crisis with our learners, our children no longer know what they are and what they want to be. Mm. And they are reading media and watching media and they are being sent mixed messages all the time, which is confusing them. And so they're dealing with this whole identity crisis, which is causing problems, because where do they fit in? Mm. So a lot of the teenagers nowadays and younger, they don't know where they fit in. They don't know where they belong. So that's causing depression. It's causing anxiety. It's causing social anxiety as well. And then you've got the bullying. So I mentioned earlier, we hide behind our screens. Mm. So the cyber attacks are becoming a lot more vicious. A child Mm. now can send a revolting message to another child thinking there's no consequences for those actions and things are said such as, I hope you die. Mm. I hope you go and kill yourself. You don't belong here. If I see your face at school tomorrow, I'm going to rearrange your face. They really are harsh in their attacks. And these poor little babies are thinking to themselves, and I call them little babies because I see them as brothers. They're not Mm. really babies, but... To me, they're all Mm, so innocent. And these are the attacks that they are facing. Sorry, they're receiving these messages. They're scared to go to school. They're scared to go to mom and dad because mom and dad don't always believe them. Are they fabricating that information? Is it really happening? No, you can't stay at home today because you're sick. You have to go to school. Mm. Little do mom and dad know they now are being faced with the bully at school. Mm. So they don't want to go to school. Mm. So a lot of our kids are 
finding it difficult to fit in. A lot of them are faced with mom and dad's problems as well. Are mom and dad fighting in front of them? Oh. Are they getting divorced and not explaining what divorce is to their children? Mm. A lot of the kids that I counsel at schools, I would say as young as grade three, grade four, mm. are telling me how they want to commit suicide, mm. are telling me how they've already thought about what they'd say in a suicide note or what method they'd use oh, to take their goodness. life. So what are we doing that's failing our children? Yeah. Why are we not explaining things in more detail to our children? Why are we not guiding them to say, okay, mom and dad are getting divorced. What does that mean? Mm. What, is, what is to come from that? Are we going to live in two different provinces? Are you still going to see dad? Is dad going mm. to become an absent father? That's a big one, mm. absent fathers are blue ticking their children mm. that are reaching out to them. Uh, what, what does that do to your child? Why are you ignoring your child's message? Mm. Why are you ignoring your child's phone call because you've divorced someone and now all of a sudden you have no accountability that that's your child? Mm. There is a range. I, I can speak forever. The list goes on and on and on. But bullying is a main one. Bullying is a huge, huge one, especially cyberbullying not fitting in with the identity crisis going sure. on and then parents not being supportive is a huge one and financial constraints as well mm. um that's that's another mm. big one i can imagine with a financial constraint for a child sorry Bonga. what i mean by that is mom and dad are struggling financially mm. and they come home and they don't keep those conversations behind closed doors so in front of the child mm. especially the little ones i mean the little ones don't understand mm. and it's we're not going to have food and how do you spend money on this and you all yes. those arguments that happen in front mm. of the kids yes. the kids go to bed thinking and replaying the next day at school they replaying oh my word are we going to have a house at the end of this month are we mm. going to be kicked out on the streets so sure, that falls on the kids yes, mm. things they shouldn't be stressing or thinking about. and you know with both the identity issue and um the financial issue i'm just thinking about social media it it doesn't stop at um it doesn't start at a particular age you mm. find that there are very young kids on social media that show a very different lifestyle i mean south africa has different classes mm. Mm. and you find 15 year olds or 60 that are living very lavish lives and i can imagine to other kids who do not afford that or let me say there's a a lot of kids who look quite well off mm -hmm. you know um and if you can't meet that added to the identity crisis i can imagine what it can do to a child um, mm -hmm. um and with with the identity issue what do you think just off of the top of your head um, with your experience, what do you think it stems from? Is it the social media? Is it what is it? I definitely think the social media plays a big role. Mm. So them watching movies, for instance, mm. we recently went to watch the new Barbie movie, mm. and I had a mouthful to say about it because mm. w what agenda are you pushing onto mm. these minors? They are so young and you know innocent, and you're pushing an agenda because you want them to move in a certain direction. Media such as that, you have massive hypes around movies and these children go and watch these movies and they're exposed to things that mm. they shouldn't be exposed to. Mm. Again, your social media platforms, you go on Instagram, what mm. are the influencers saying? Mm. So we like to ask the kids in one of our um, educational talks that we do, what does an influencer start with? What lesser does it start with? And they say, I. What, what lesser does idiot start with? I. Oh, that makes sense. Isn't it, <laughs> isn't it a coinky dink that they both start with the same letter? Mm. And it's not to say that all influences are bad. Mm. You know, you've got your influences that really motivate and push kids and adults. Mm. But then you've got influences that use it to their advantage to gain power over children, mm. to push agendas with children as mm. well. So I would say social media is a big, a big factor. Gosh, Games, uh, this one in specific, interactive advertisements that pop up on games mm. so you think mm. that your child is safe you think that you've got an age restriction on their ipad or their tablet or their phone they've got age restricted games you know age appropriate games that they're playing With all the of ads. a sudden an ad pops up that you have no control over mm. most of the times if you pay for games those ads are limited but if it's a free game those ads pop up all the time mm. and what happens with those ads it's 
draws the attention of the child to click on the link yes that then redirects them to another site that you have no control over mm. it's not age restricted it's not age appropriate and then the child learns about things they shouldn't be aware of you're mm. saying something so interesting that i've never yeah i don't have kids so obviously i've never thought of that but wow yeah so parents think that they have control they've got all these parenting apps installed mm. on the ipad mm. and tablet and the phone so my child is kept safe my child is safeguarded from all this nonsense they're not. There's mm. where there's a will, there's a way. That's so they true. will find a way to get to those children. Mm. I had a girl that I counseled, I'll never forget. She was reading a book, an online book, on an app and a porn site popped up. Mm. And she didn't realize because there were no weird pictures. And as she tried to click exit, it redirected her. And it happened twice and it happened quite a few years before she spoke to me and she says she cannot get the images out of her head mm. and that's also where your porn addiction in children is stemming from yes so it, sure. it, it's a wide range and of the problems. general curiosity at that time um yes. intertwined with those yes. pop-ups yeah, etc puberty essential and now you're struggling to deal with your own hormones and you know and then now yeah, sure. There's so much to look out for you. It's scaring me, maybe. <laughs> Children. <laughs> but tell me, what are some of the identifiers? I'm a parent, I'm listening, and I'm like, oh, my kid could be going through a lot or is about to go through an era of a lot. Maybe my child is 10, 11, moving towards adolescence, teenagehood. What are some of the identifiers that my child could be struggling with something? Depression, bullying, mm. um, you know, everything that you've mentioned. What, what are some of the identifiers that my child is actually not okay so what are some of the signs that you can look out for um, would be physical ones would be a good start. So if your child is not eating, if your child is eating too much, if your child is not eating, are they being bullied because of their weight? Is that going to now cause an eating disorder that you need to be concerned of? Is your child not sleeping enough? Um, I had a mom ask me a question, what is chewing? Um, and that means vaping smoking mm. so she wasn't aware of the lingo but she saw a message on her child's phone mm. and chewing means vaping or smoking and that is something that's happening in the schools at a at a rapid rate now as young as grade two grade three they not sure how to discipline these children or disciplinary hearings or how to go about it because how does a grade two learner come to school with a vape and share mm. it with their friends how do you handle that situation mm. so the mom asked me is my child vaping if her lips are white? And I thought, hmm, I'm not entirely sure. Google is your best friend. So I went mm -hmm. onto Google and I actually researched and there will be physical signs that you can look out for to pick up if your child is doing things they shouldn't be doing. Mm. Another one would be if it's hot and it's summer and your child doesn't want to swim or doesn't want to play sport and is wearing long, like long sleeves and hoodies and long pants is your child self-harming mm -hmm. those are the things to look out for so eating sleeping physical signs on the body is a big one mood swings we all think that our child's just going through a phase because the child gets into the car grabs the phone how was your day oh it was fine uh, did you do anything interesting no i didn't it was it was a normal day they're so short and abrupt mm. but maybe you're asking the question in the wrong way that's not appealing to your child. Maybe you need to ask it in a more appealing way to get them to open up to you. Mm. If you address your child in an age appropriate manner that re they can relate to, they will open up to you. Mm. It's to build that communication with your child. Where build does one that learn trust. that skill? Where does one learn that? Because I mean, this speaks to the next question that, you know, we want to segue into the, the gap between parents and children, mm. you know, because um, I'm imagining, I, I didn't know what chafing was. And I don't have a kid yet, so you can imagine by the time I do have, there'll be more lingo that I have no idea of. Like, how do you close the gap? You know, how do you get to a place where you're learning? Do you follow kids' TikTok? What do you do? You know, recently uh, my sister said to me, speaking of my niece, she said, she keeps talking about she in, she in, what's she in? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's just, it's just a clothing store. But, you know, like I, I just realized, ah, the, you know, the gaps are, mm. how do we close the gaps? So how do we learn anything in life? If yeah. you want to become a doctor, inevitably you start reading books that probably a doctor would have written or you watch YouTube videos or you research. Mm. Similar to a child, how do you get to know a child? 
you ask them the right questions in an age-appropriate manner. Mm. Allow your child to open up to you and teach you. So as much as you're teaching your children, allow your children to teach you. Mm. They will think that they know everything, which will be more of a push for them to educate you on what is going on. Mm. So, oh, I heard, let's say, for instance, going on YouTube or going on TikTok or Instagram, I heard that this is a trend going on. Have, have you seen this happen at your school? Act silly, act like you're completely clueless mm. investigate the trends on social media platforms use that to your advantage when you're a parent mm. to familiarize yourself with what is happening in the world of where your children interact mm. and then ask your children those questions but from a side of i don't know what this is can you explain it to me what what is chufing i've, I've heard someone mm. mention this or can you explain what that is to me or have you been exposed to this at school? Have any of your teachers discussed this topic with you? Those conversations need to be had. Mm -hmm. And the thing that we're struggling with parents nowadays is that everyone is in a rat race. We yes. all have such a busy life and a busy schedule. Are we making the time to actually check if our children are okay? Mm -hmm. Are we making the time to look for those subtle signs? I think it's 75% of children before they commit suicide actually show or tell someone that they're going to do it before yes. doing it they will tell a friend they will tell a family member i'm thinking of this or i'm in need of help but because we're so busy we miss those signs mm. so it's to make that time mm. instead of rushing home to cook before load shedding cook your dinner during load shedding light a candle sit your child down have dinner at the dinner table. Mm. Have a conversation with your yeah. child. Mm. Don't allow your child to slip through the cracks. Don't allow yeah. your child to go into their room and eat a meal. Mm. Force your child. It's going to create a little bit of chaos and arguments in the beginning with your child in the household, but rather the arguments in the beginning for the communication at the end. Sure. Mm -hmm. And like with most relationships, um, I think the starting point is being intentional, like you say want to learn more but mm -hmm. also that the fact that it's ongoing you cannot begin when you see an issue i mean of course you see the issue so you want to intervene but on the grand scheme of things the relationship is an ongoing work you do not just intervene when there's an issue and then okay we've dealt with the issue let's go back to the normal it's an ongoing relationship that needs to be maintained like any other relationship mm -hmm. i actually was i remember a, not a friend but someone on facebook was relating how their parents were very intentional about um, Fridays were times was a time for them to play games as mm. a family. And the person spoke about how that opened up their world to speaking about things, you know, because they get to know their parent in an informal setting. Mm. So they play games together, but that opened them up to learning more about each other and feeling comfortable around their parents because they're used to playing games with them in any yeah. case, you yeah. know? So I think as parents, um, parenthood to a lot of us comes um, planned and unplanned. Mm. But I think once you have a baby and you decide to have a baby that is constantly learning um, of how to be better for the person, you know? Mm. So, yeah, it's an ongoing learning thing. I think that is very important what you've emphasized. I've actually never even thought about the games thing, but as you're saying it, I've got a very good relationship with my mom and we did games all the time. Yeah. Mm. I've never thought about it. Maybe mm. those are the sort of building blocks towards that. Yeah. Because, I mean, the question is always, like, how do they get it right? You just see that some people are getting it right. But the one and things like that, it's the games night. It's, you know, being intentional about mm. having conversations and asking. Um, I can think of as early as Krish. I was like, Mommy, I've got a boyfriend. She's like, oh, yeah? What do you guys do? Yes. <laughs> do you guys chat? She didn't freak out. Yes. She was super calm, you know. And those are things that, you know, are still building on even now that, you know, intentionality of, like, a relationship so these are things that i think we maybe even like pick up a book on like a bit of yes. child psychology and how the child's mind works so that you can bridge the gap and i think you and um i think we realize it when you bring babies in but i think we also don't realize how critical of a role it is mm -hmm. like you are assisting in the building of an entire human being that's going to exist in this world mm -hmm. so the duty on you to be intentional mm -hmm. because you've brought them into the world is mm -hmm. very very important Yes. Yeah. Do you have a question? No, I don't have a question. Great. <laughs> so now I realize, or I know, matter of fact, my child has been through some kind of trauma either that I couldn't prevent them from as a parent. Say my child was raped. 
you know, and now we're working through the process. Or oh, not that bad. My child was being bullied. I've pulled them out of the school. I've done everything that I can do as a parent. Mm. But now I'm, I'm observing my child who's dealing with this trauma or walking through, walking with them through an eating disorder or walking through. I'm really trying my best to be a, pe- a present parent. How can I best do that? How can I best execute supporting my child through a traumatic experience? So listen to your child. Create a safe space, a safe environment. Hold the space for your child to speak and open up. If your child is not willing to open up, that's okay. It mm. will come. Mm. Keep reassuring. Keep building the trust. Keep mm. letting. Keep allowing your child to know that there is support. That's a very important one. That they mm. are supported. They are mm. not alone through that journey. And very important, if your child needs external help, don't be afraid to get that external help. Mm. Counseling isn't a scary place it shouldn't be a scary place psychology shouldn't be feared or judged or criticized it's there to help Mm. if your child is going to go and see a psychologist or a counselor that is okay Mm. it doesn't mean that someone is a bad parent Mm. it actually means that they are so concerned for their child they do not have the necessary knowledge or tool set in place to assist that child fully Mm. and to get that from somewhere else from a professional that's why they exist. That's why they are there. Mm. So it's to really just support the child, reassure the child through the mm. reassure the child through that journey, mm. be there for the child, create a safe space for the child if there's external help needed because your methods are not working, mm. which is okay to get that external help. Yes, yes. And then um, I know we're approaching exam time, so I want to ask something very related to exam time. Um, what are the interventions that parents can put in place? I remember with me, I was a student that did well. Mm. And then in matric, all of a sudden, it was like, hey, you got to study. I said, ma'am, all the, <laughs> way to been. Grade, all the way to grade 11, I've been doing top five and top 10. <laughs> when did you decide that now you want to tell me where to study? You know, I was mm. so frustrated mm. by all of a sudden this pressure, you know. Mm. So this is how, mom, I love you. Thank you so much. But how could a parent support their child in that season? You know, a child that maybe isn't as studious or what are the measurements you're saying now exam time is coming and a parent is listening saying how do I support my child during this era in the the correct way very important question so I know a lot of parents are overprotective or um, over invested in their child's life which is not good do not be a helicopter parent Mm. Uh, that really does push a child away from the parent Mm -hmm. and then the child starts hiding their stress or hiding Mm. the self-harm and all the rest so it's to be present but don't be overbearing mm. when you are present. I know it's a very fine line. If you mm. do too much of this or too little Should of that, it, it, so that's what it's I'm hearing. very being difficult. Being mm. difficult. Yeah. Um, so I think to support your child, mm. um, attend to your child's needs. If your child needs extra nutrients during that time to assist, also diet is a big one. Mm. What are you feeding your child during exam time? Because whatever they're putting into their bodies mm. is inevitably going to affect their mood. Mm. It's going to affect how their brain functions. It's mm. going to affect their personality and their mood swings during that time. I love what you're saying. Yes. So something as simple as the diet. Are you incorporating vegetables? Mm. Are you incorporating the necessary nutrients that the child needs during that time to function at Mm. optimal level? Therefore, after, you know, ensuring that there's other steps involved. So does your child need to speak to someone? Is your child supported through that journey? Do they feel supported? Not, I'm here for you, my darling. Are you okay? Does your child feel supported through exams? Mm. That's a different um, topic completely as opposed to I'm here to support you. They have to feel like they are supported through that time. Mm. Do they need to spend some time with friends away from the studies, which mm. is a big, big one for, for parents. They have to sit down with the book in, in their faces and study and cram as much information in. They can't be social during that time. They can't mm. go out to friends yeah. or family events. No, your child needs social interaction during that time as well. Absolutely. Sometimes those friends are providing support to them that you're mm. not su- supplying, and that's okay. Yep. But you don't understand that the friend is a support system and they need that friend. So taking a phone away completely, mm. I'd say, yes, go for it. But sometimes that's not the best thing during exam time. So it's all about limitation and moderation. Everything in moderation is better than removing or to... Uh, or exposing too much so everything in moderation 
the social side of things, the studying, the diet, all of that combined. And if your child needs to speak to someone external, to get them someone external to speak to as well. Mm. So there's a lot of factors that are mm. at play. There's a lot that a parent can do to assist a child during exam time. Another thing is to not judge your child. Yes. Not beat your child because your child has not performed. Mm. Not be so critical on your child. We're so focused on criticizing others. You didn't study hard enough. That's why you didn't get a good enough mark. Or um, why didn't you, you um, give me your phone? You see, because you were on your phone, you got a bad mark. Mm. Maybe your child is struggling with something else that's mm. underlying. And that's the reason for the bad mark. But mm. what happens when you see that it is the phone? How do you address that? Then, then you need to address it. The exactly moderation that. and what moderation. she was talking about. If your child, you can see your child is not studied, different scenario completely. But what I mean by this is maybe the child is just not academically strong. Yeah. Maybe they're more um, artsy. artsy or mm. associated with sports. Mm. That's okay. Yep. Not every child is going to be strong in academics. Mm. You Maybe. cannot force someone to be someone, something, mm. sorry, that they're not. Mm -hmm. You cannot force that. So be understanding. Also communicate. If your child gets a bad mark, do, before shouting, you're not good enough. Why didn't you study hard enough? You sit them down and explain the consequences of those actions. Let them understand. Communicate. You didn't get a good mark. What do you think the reason is for that mark? Mm. Do you feel like you could have done better? Are you happy with the mark that you got? Make them accountable for their own actions as well. Mm. Before disciplining them, make them accountable. Make them realize that, okay, maybe they could have done better, but let it come from them. Yeah. Instead of you enforcing it and pushing it onto them, yeah. let them realize, okay, maybe I should have studied a bit harder. Yeah. And then work with them. Mm. Not against them, work with them. How can we improve? What can I do from my side to be a good parent to you? What can you do from your side? It's a two-way street. Yeah. Mm. Any relationship is a two-way street. Mm. We both need to work together mm. to make it a good working relationship. Yeah. So you're not um, yeah. hitting heads the whole time. Yeah. I'm sorry about the abrupt ending of that video. We realized in post-production that we didn't record like the last 30 seconds of it. But basically what happens is that I thanked Dana for coming onto the show. And I also expanded that there were still so many questions that I wanted to ask her around supporting uh, her children, nieces, nephews, and things like that. And I asked her to come back to the show. I hope you guys enjoyed every moment of it. We're always so grateful for all the love and support that you guys give us. For now, though, goodbye and God bless.